We all know that Aussie whiskey is having a moment, and if you didn't, then you should check out our series on it here. An Australian gin is booming with almost 300 distilleries at last count. But what about everything else? Would it be possible to stock a bar entirely with Australian products and make as many cocktails as you want? In my opinion, absolutely. I was lucky enough to be asked to judge the Australian Distilled Spirits Awards this year and the panel that I got put on was, to me anyway, definitely the most fun. We tasted everything from vermouth and aperitifs to bitters to absinthe to agave spirits. That's right, Mexico, we're coming for you. And all Australian made. When you think about the environmental cost of international shipping, plus an increased public preference for supporting local, it's really a no-brainer to sit a few native heroes on your back bar. Australia has such a distinctive landscape and produce that I do just love to taste that reflected in my glass as well. In this video, I am gonna concentrate more on interesting ingredients for your cocktails, but definitely let me know in the comments if you want more chat on alternative Australian spirits like agave and cane. Speaking of local scene, thank you very much to A Plus who are a partner for this video. It's part of a series that we've produced in partnership with them. These kind of do some deep dives into some important issues facing the industry and just allow me to nerd out a little bit. Now let's take a look at some of my favorite, most versatile products and stay tuned because I'll also be knocking up some all Aussie delights to show how well they substitute into classic cocktails or how they can work as the catalyst for some innovative drinks creation to set your venue apart. These are a few products and producers that have earned themselves a pretty constant spot on my bar because they're basically a direct replacement for classic cocktail ingredients, but homegrown and often even more delicious than the major international players. What's not to love? I will pop contact details for them all down below if anyone feels inspired to make a change in their bars, but this is in no way sponsored by any of these guys. I do just think they're great. So first off, Marionette. Anyone who is a regular viewer here will know how much of a fan I am of these Melbourne-made liqueurs. They're made by literally the nicest folks in hospitality who all have serious bartending pedigree and so really know what we need in a liqueur. Um, and then they work directly with Australian farmers to use seasonal fruit, so often stuff that's too ugly for supermarkets. They started out with only a cassis, but then they quickly added a curacao, and now they have a pretty full range, including an apricot brandy and even an amaretto. They are generally less sweet than large commercial brands, but that allows the fruit flavors to be really bright and vibrant, and then they work really well in most classics. I honestly get a bit disappointed nowadays if I have a margarita that isn't made with their curacao, and the depth of nuttiness that you can get in an amaretto sour with their amaretto is next level. 78 Degrees have become a bit of a one-stop shop for well-priced Australian booze. They have gins, whiskies, vodka, even some dangerously tasty pre-mixed G&T cans. But today I'm talking about their vermouths and bitters. Sasha the distiller spent some time in Europe and learned how to make classic Italian staples, vermouth and amari. He came home determined to recreate those flavour profiles using the crazy abundance of unique native plants that Australia boasts. Their orange bitter sits somewhere between Aperol and Campari in terms of sweetness and intensity with heaps of juicy orange notes, so it works equally well in a Negroni and a Spritz. The vermouths are also made in that Italian style, so really big and bold. My favourite is the Rosé, which has a toasty, nutty note from wattle seeds and then a really cool sort of savoury herbal edge from things like Carcala and Native Thyme. Now I love it just on ice, but it also works in a spritz or as a really interesting martini variation. Unsurprisingly, it pairs, pairs quite well with their sunset gin and a little grapefruit twist, and who doesn't love a pink drink? They also have a massive focus on sustainability with a closed loop water system and an energy system which actually feeds power back into the grid. So brownie points for that too. And on that note, A Plus do have a pretty cool article on sustainability on their website, which mentions all of this as well. Given that I work in a Spanish-inspired venue, I do have a small, okay, quite large obsession with sherry. But Australia has its own proud history of making fortified wines, which are now known as apera. While Oz might be better known for sticky, so really thick and sweet wines, some winemakers do make a Spanish style of dry sherry. And my favourite cocktail in this neighbourhood is the Olive Spritz from Gerald's Bar in Carlton North, and it uses the Pennyweight Fino style sherry. They also have an Oloroso and an Amontillado style too, um, so it can be substituted into sherry cobblers or bamboos, coronation cocktails, whatever really. I do find them a bit rounder and richer than most Spanish sherry, which makes sense given the bold style of most Australian booze really, um, but it just adds extra depth and weight. 
Now it makes sense that we have our own mixers to go with all of this tasty booze and strange love delivers. Their tonics echo a lot of the indigenous botanicals found in Aussie gin and they stand up to them really well. But my MVP is their salted grapefruit soda because it makes the best Paloma ever, but also just works as sort of a grown up soft drink. Sophisticated mixers using local produce and interesting flavor combinations. Again, what's not to love? So there we have some easy and delicious Australian substitutions for your classic cocktails, but it is about time I made some drinks. Just because I'm greedy and I want to show you even more exciting products, I'm gonna use a few different ones to what I've just discussed. But you obviously usually only really need one vermouth, one bitter and so on in your repertoire, unless you have a real focus on a particular category in your bar. And that leads us to the Australian Negroni make. The Negroni is arguably the most classic of classics. A simple three ingredient drink, which showcases the interplay of sweet, bitter and dry, which underpins every well-balanced cocktail. It's also the perfect setting to let an Australian ingredient showdown play out. Maiden Eye was the first Australian vermouth I ever tried and it's still one of my favorites. Plus the producer is a very suave Frenchman. This sweet vermouth is made specifically with a Negroni in mind, so it's got a really spicy cab sav wine base and then botanicals like grapefruit zest, sea parsley and strawberry gum, which just gives it heaps of lift. The St. Felix uh, Bitter Aperitivo is a red bitter um, from just outside of Melbourne. Uh, they use heaps and heaps of citrus, it's really juicy um, and then it also uses uh, lemon myrtle for a lovely fragrance and some rosella there as well. Both of these are quite intense and powerful so I actually like to keep the gin quite clean and bright. The aforementioned 7 to 8 degrees distillery does have a classic gin which keeps it pretty straightforward in terms of botanicals and provides a perfect juniper and citrus backbone here. I do knock both modifiers back a little bit from the traditional equal parts ratio because they are such strong flavours but you can obviously start there and then just bump them up to your taste. We're going to go with 20 ml of Maiden Eye Sweet Vermouth into your mixing glass. Then 20 ml of the St. Felix Bitter Citrus Aperitivo. If I can get it open, I always do this to myself. There we go. Do it off camera next time. And then 40 ml of the Adelaide Hills Classic Gin. Um, as I said, the Maiden Eye has that lovely grapefruit zest in there, so I do like to kind of play on that rather than use the traditional orange uh, just to tie in. So we're going to do a grapefruit zest. I am just going to keep that really nice and chunky because, as I said, we're definitely not dealing with any shrinking violets flavour-wise here, so it's a pretty kind of bold and rustic drink. Then we're just going to stir the Negroni on some ice. Grab your glass out from the fridge or the freezer and then just use a little julep strainer to hold the ice back. Fill up with some fresh ice or a big ice block is ideal if you have it as well. Then just give your grapefruit a little fold over the top to get all those lovely oils. Then we can roll that up and slot it in. And there we have an Australian Negroni. So we'll see how this goes. It's really yummy. It's a bit more savoury than um, your sort of classic Negroni. I feel like uh, both the Maiden Eye and um, the St. Felix have a few more kind of like woody botanicals in there. So it's got like a really pretty good sort of solid um, woody spice uh, on the finish as well. Super juicy. And you just get all of that um, really nice lifted notes from your sort of uh, lemon myrtle and things like that. It's actually just generally got a bit more going on um, than a classic Negroni uh, in terms of supporting flavors, but still very much has that sort of triangle of, you know, your sweet, dry and bitter, which is exactly what you want for this drink. So all in all, a very successful substitution, I would say. So if that's a classic Negroni seen through an Australian lens, what about taking it out of the box a bit? As I said before, that flavour triangle is the base of many an old school cocktail and modern take and I often lean on it when doing drinks development like with this next drink. Melbourne Cocktail Week was one of the few events that we actually managed to have go ahead this year despite lockdowns and at Bomba we partnered with Mr Black Coffee Liqueur to host an event showcasing coffee cocktails 
beyond the espresso martini. Not that that's not still my favourite. Cafe Coretto is one of those it shouldn't work, but it does combinations of espresso and amaro, uh, quite often Campari, and so I took inspiration from that to create a bittersweet digestif. Mr. Black is a coffee liqueur which really encapsulates how much Aussies love coffee. It's way less sweet than most coffee liqueurs, so it doesn't really dominate in a drink like this in terms of texture, and it provides plenty of that espresso-style bitterness. Now, the 78 Degrees Bitter Orange, as I said before, sits a little less astringently bitter than Campari, and so it's juicy and, again, just works nicely in harmony. The Regal Rogue Lively White is in the style of a Bianco vermouth, so off-dry in terms of sweetness level, um, and this drink does need a little bit of sweetness. And it has really bright citrus notes like finger lime and desert lime, as well as softer florals like elderflower and chamomile. I actually infused it overnight with mandarin, both the pith and the segments, to tie it into the orange coffee notes going on in the other ingredients and it's also where this drink gets its name because you half a little mandarin segment and dehydrate it to make a beautiful mandarin garnish if you don't have a dehydrator then it absolutely works just fresh as well now we're gonna go in with 20 ml of the 78 degrees bitter orange Then we go fill 30 ml of our mandarin infused Regal Rogue. And then fill 30 ml again of the Mr. Black coffee liqueur. Pops nice in and give that all a stir. None of this is particularly high ABV. There's not like a spirit in there per se. So you actually don't have to stress too much about diluting it that much. It's really just to chill it down. Then just grab your uh, rocks glass out of preferably the freezer or the fridge if you can. Just use your julep strainer to hold the ice back and pour into your glass. Then we're just gonna add some fresh ice or um, a big block is kind of ideal. I did have a slight freezer malfunction today, um, but this will absolutely do. Then, last but not least, our little mandarin butterfly can just balance on the side here. And there we have a butterfly effect. Give this one a little taste as well. It's really delicious, like super, super juicy. Um, and obviously not that high in ABV, so quite gentle compared to kind of your other Negroni style drinks. Um, and then that coffee just comes through with like a big whack of kind of bitter and drying coffee at the end. It definitely, if you're as much of a caffeine fiend as me, it leaves you wanting to go back for more. Look, I don't like to toot my own trumpet, but I was pretty happy with this one and it's been on the menu for a while and has had a really good reception. So it is really fun to see how kind of being inspired by and playing around with these Australian products can uh, make something pretty damn delicious. One disclaimer I'd like to add is that as much as I'm saying that they substitute well into classic cocktails, they do change them. So I know many people who will get a little bit mad if they order a Negroni and it comes with something other than Campari because that's the exact taste that they're looking for. Each Australian product has its own distinct flavour profile and that's what's so cool. But I would consider calling it out on your menu with something like Australian Negroni rather than just handing your guests something made with all of Australian ingredients when they've asked for a regular Negroni. Then another nice thing about all of these guys being local is that they usually have feet on the ground in every Australian city and they're keen to get their products represented well. So if you were kind of considering any options here, then I'd just reach out to your local reps and have a little try before you buy. Thank you very much to A Plus who are a partner for this video. Please head over to their website. They've got heaps more industry focused articles and videos and industry support as well.